It's full time devils. It feels like deja vu. It's the Wolves preview. Uh, my name's Gaz. That's Jay Marty. Joined by Adam McCola. Stephen Housen's here as well. Guys, let's get stuck into it. The FA Cup. It, I know it's a replay, but it is our biggest chance of winning a competition this year. Is it not, Adam? Maybe. We're in the League Cup semis. <laughs> We're three one down off the first leg. Europa League still loads of football to play in that. We're not going to win anything else. It's got to be, mate. No, the, I think the Europa League's probably, you know, some. We're not the best team in England, are we? But you can't play a lot of games in the Europa League. That's what I think. I think we could possibly be the best team in the Europa League. Do you think? I kind of think that with how inconsistent we are, because we're obviously a young team, we're going to be inconsistent in a competition yeah, a where you've got to play two legs till the end. We're obviously less likely to win that than we are the FA Cup. No, I don't think so, because in the Europa League as well, um, obviously the quality of opposition isn't Champions League level opposition. And I think, you know, over two legs, we'll always be confident in beating most Europa League teams at home. So then going away to their ground, being able to play on the counter-attack and all that jazz should should be ideal for us. That's not to say we're going to win it. It's still a long way to go in the competition. Without a midfield, um, we're not going to win anything this season. So it's still vitally important that we... We strengthen our team. Um, but in regards to the cup competitions, we are a cup team this season. Um, we're obviously not going to win the league. Um, I'd like to think, look, regardless of my opinion that we're not going to get top four, we are still in a top four race despite our inconsistencies. So, yeah, it's our best chance for a trophy. But I, it's if you come up against Manchester City in the quarterfinal, semifinal, you get battered. What can you do? Do you know what I mean? And I just think in the Europa League, we're probably... We can probably control our destiny a little bit more. I understand that. Well, Wolves are Europa League level opposition, aren't they, Housen? So, how do you think we can deal with them? I think we've been really poor. I think in ourselves, we've been poor against Wolves. And, and some of that might be down to the opposition. Some of that might be down to opposition tactics. Some of that might down to be, be down to us uh, not taking the game as we should or not having our own. Uh, tactics and house in order going into those games um, I, I think we can get past them in a the cup I, I, unlike Adam I actually think that yeah we're not the best team in England uh, but we're pretty oh, good John, against the oh, best teams in England good point we're, well yeah we're not even close to being the best team in England but we do perform against the best teams in England and I, I wonder if um, if we come up against some of the, the teams in Europa League that might just completely shut the door against us do we have the ability to open that door just the same way that we struggled in the Premier League? So I actually think that the FA Cup, even though we're essentially at our first round stage still, uh, I think we could probably do bits in. Um, Europa League is about 45 games, I think, until the final from the point we're at now. So there's loads of potential ways to, to mess up there. Um, there's a long way to go in either of them. Um, but I, I think, you know, I think we'd all admit that it's going to take a miracle. Um, but I, I think we're in for a tough week, a week, 10 days, to be honest. We've obviously got Wolves to deal with. Uh, we've got Liverpool at Anfield, and then we've got City at the Etihad. Uh, th this is tough. This is going to be a tough week. We're going to need some resilience um, from the players, but also from the support. Can't go in thinking that we're going to... I mean, I think one out of three wins is probably realistic. Um, obviously hoping for three out of three, but let's be real and say that Yo, does anyone expect us to go to Anfield and turn over a team that's lost once in two years? Mm, probably not. How important? I think, go just on, to Adam. correct Steve, uh, before the comments kill him, in, uh, Burnley's the game after Liverpool. Yeah, you know what I mean? There's, there's still that fucking City game, game on the City horizon. Later, but it's on the horizon. Yeah, yeah, but there's always pedantic people in the comments. I understand exactly what you mean. How important is it to you, Jay, that we... <laughs> just slagging off the comments. Why, why, why not? Sorry, not all Sorry, not We do appreciate your support. We, we really do. Subscribe and like below. Um, Jay, what do you think about the FA Cup? How important is the FA Cup to you? This game, if we were to lose, how gutted are you? We win, how buzzing are you? I think for this game... As Steve mentioned there, what I'd be gutted about if we lost is the fact that there's so many tough games coming up, that mm -hmm. this is a game that, realistically, if we lose this, then you've got Liverpool, you've got City, I know we've got Burnley as well, but those sorts of games coming up, you expect us almost to lose, and these are the games, this game at Old Trafford, you should be winning. And also, looking at our record, as everyone's mentioned, is it five games we played Wolves and not beat them in? Over the last I mean, two seasons. Six? Yeah. That's, I mean, that's, that's ridiculous. You know, this is Wolves, this isn't... 
fucking City or, or the Scousers. This is a team that, OK, they've got some good players, but they've not gone out and spent like 500 million quid on the team. We should be able to beat them. So, yeah, you know, I'd be more disappointed with losing this than I would be in many ways. In, I know it hurts more to lose to City or whoever, but you sort of expect it. And it, as for the FA Cup, listen, some of my best memories of being a United fan are, are FA Cup games and I think we've got a chance in this competition because as other people have mentioned you know we have beaten City we have beaten Spurs we have beaten Leicester we have beaten Chelsea in the league so we can obviously beat big teams and that gives you a chance in this competition and if we won the FA Cup considering the season we've had I know it's a massive if considering all the, the turmoil that's been going on the players we've let go and how poor we've been against some teams as well so in the FA Cup would be, would be massive it'd be up there with, with sort of any post Fergie achievement Halson, I'm going to ask this question really simply. Why can we never beat Wolves? I know, sometimes you just get a bogey team, don't you? That you know they've got a great manager uh, and they've got some really good players. And you know for ages it looked like Klopp had the beating of Manchester City, didn't it? It looked like it, every time they played against him, he just had that knack. Um, and maybe Nuno's just got that knack against this United team at the moment. It happens sometimes. You remember, I mean, remember Gally Monk at Swansea? Yeah. He went three on the trot against us or something stupid. And the, the, the thing is with Wolves is obviously they are a really good team. They've got a good squad, but it also seems like they've got a really good structure and a good plan as well. Like the last, like they've not been a, a top Premier League, a top 10 Premier League team for very long. It just feels like they put the plan in place. And It's, it's amazing what um, Chinese billionaire owners and uh, ties to a Portuguese super agent can do for a little club, isn't but, it? I'm not saying that it's a just fairy tale Brad story, Rich. mate. That's <laughs> not what I'm saying. No, we're I mean, selling milk bottle tops. That, that's you know, how they raised all the money. Loads yeah. of teams have money. We've got money, but, but we've got they've no obviously, fucking They've not plan. just got money. They've obviously got that connection, which can bring in... Yao Moutinho wouldn't have gone to, say, I don't know, uh, Norwich, what if they had money. Do you know what I mean? It's the connection with Jorge Mendes that's got them a lot of these players. The, not just the money, the fact they've got the connection. And yeah, OK, you bring in the players, that doesn't mean you're going to be successful. As um, as Steve mentioned, they've got a good manager. They've got a manager who knows what he's doing, so who can make them gel. And I think in terms of why we've struggled against them, for me, a lot of the time, it's the midfield. I think the midfield plays well together. And we've been weak in midfield, especially, you know, last couple of games against them. So I think that's why we've struggled. I think they've got a good midfield that can play football the right way. And most of the time, our midfield's been missing key players as well. It's almost like a Leicester situation, isn't it, where the midfield is just so strong that they can outplay a lot of teams in midfield. Um, Adam, what do you think? Why, why have Wolves become our bogey team, if you like? Failed to beat them twice this season and three times last season. We should have won the game this season in the league, to be fair. Um, we missed the penalty, obviously, which was disappointing. Um, but, look, they're a good side. And I think, I remember Steve saying the other week that you could you could handpick a few players from relegation teams and improve Manchester United massively, and that's not to say Wolves are that because they're not um, far from it. But if you look at their midfield, their midfield's better than ours, and I think it was shown in the game in in the cup. Um, I remember watching it, and there was a point in the game where Ali brought on Fred to strengthen our midfield and kind of try and take control of the game. And Nuno Espirito Santo was like, "Right, I'll bring on Neves," then. and it was just like. They had a trump card in that midfield every time. And the midfield is massively important. If you look at Adama Traore, Raul Jimenez, um, and the other fellow that plays up top, is it Yata? If you look at the way they're playing, that midfield supplies them with so much. Um, and I, I do feel for Anthony Martial, Marcus Rashford at times, um, and, and even Danny James or, or whoever plays out on the right, we don't find them enough. That's not the reason why we're not beating Wolves. Um, I think Ali has had enough opportunities to be able to see what they're good at, what you know, where we can try and get something right tactically. But again, when you're fighting with the midfield we have, which is non-existent, um, especially when you take McTominay and Pogba out of the mix, it's difficult to beat these big teams um, because they'll absolutely kill you in the middle of the park. And that's what we've seen a lot of the times. It's not been, you know, there's been games obviously where defensively we're a bit poor. But I think that's down to the, to the, to the midfield again. Um, what's in front of it? We saw Nemanja Matic. I've been I've been heavily critical of him um, in the last twelve months, but his performances in the last you know his substitute appearance against City and his performance uh, against Norwich, albeit against Norwich, were, were re- really good. And it shows you that if you actually rest him and give him game time off and manage his minutes, um, maybe we can get a player out of him. And maybe he was just not helped by the fact that Josie played him every week. Jay, do Wolverhampton Wanderers have a better manager than Manchester United? <laughs> oh, mate. 
it's an awful question, isn't it? Yeah. It's an awful question. Um, well, Adam's answered straight away. So straight she... away, in with that. I think if you look at a record, you'd probably say yeah. Especially in it, you know, over the last few seasons, especially Ollie had that amazing start at United, um, but since then it hasn't been great. And prior to that, his last job before United was obviously um, wasn't successful at Cardiff. You have to go back to Mulder to look at you know re- when Ollie has had success. Where fuck you, um, come on, Mulder. Nuno's been a lot more consistent. Good to see But him. that doesn't mean that I'd swap him. In, you know, I yeah, I know what you mean. I, I like what you know was done at, at, um, at Wolves, but I wouldn't want him as Manchester United manager. Whereas, you know, if we're going to get into that whole debate. I've always said I'd give Ollie at least to the end of the season and then see where we're at. So, if I can sort of avoid try to sit on the fence too much in answer to your question, yeah, they probably have, but I wouldn't swap managers. Adam, the Wolves have a better manager than United. The reason I said yes, guys, is because as of yet, Ollie hasn't. You know, he's won in Norway and that, but he hasn't really proven anything with us. Yes, we're we're above them in the league. The league table probably doesn't lie. And you can say, you know, United are above Wolves. So therefore, he's the better manager at this moment in time. I'm not even being harsh or being a dickhead towards Ali when I say that. I just think when you look at what they've both done, you'd have to say based on that, you'd, you'd put if you were going to rank the Premier League managers, you'd say Nuno was above him. Um, and I think you'd put a lot of Premier League managers above Ali. Hopefully in 12 months, 18 months time, Ollie's still in the job and we're thinking, well, actually now he's proven that he is better than the rest of them and he, he's, he's managed to climb up that pecking order. But we're still looking at a manager that is very much finding his feet. Um, it's incredible, really, when you consider, you know, we're Manchester United, one of, if not the biggest club in the world, and we've still got a manager that's trying to learn and trying to find his feet and, and, and things like that. It shows you what the, the management and the owners have done to us. But look, at the moment, yes. It's like saying Rashford's better than... I don't know, Harry Kane, because he's a bit above him in the goal-scoring charts. He's not at the moment. He could be, but he's not at the moment. Um, fantastic player, though. And we need to talk more about Rashford. There's a conversation to be had there. You know what? Um, You're right. I think- because we talk... I said at the start of the season, 2006, 2007, Rooney and Ronaldo. He's right. Marcel and, uh, Marcel and Rashford are doing it, bruv. And it's like, yeah, we haven't got a great team. We haven't got... Rio and Roy Keane and all these lot around them, these boys are actually killing it. Um, and I think it's something to be to be proud of and happy about as a Man United fan that these boys are starting to develop and click and um, show their potential. So right. I mean, so many times this I mean, season. I think it's the only thing at the minute to be proud of if we're being honest. Exactly. So many times I've just <laughs> been like fan. properly pissed off, just like really fuming about United, always trying to take my mind off it. But then... Just concentrate on Marcus Rashford for a bit and how fucking brilliant he's been this season. Look how good he is though as well. Like even on social media and that. Yeah. Um, I know it's easy and he's probably got someone tweeting those things out and all that, but he just he, he just makes like he's, he, I think he carries the club name very well. Um, and he is someone to, to to be proud of as a Man United player. It's like what you say to Mac. You know, I'm not saying he's better than any other player, but I wouldn't swap him for anyone. I wouldn't. I just think he's, you know, he's exactly what we need. Exactly the sort of player the fans love, and he's on fire. And hopefully, he's only going to get better as well. He's only just turned twenty-two. Come outside. You what? What? Back page. Come outside now, mate. Behave. Hey, he couldn't. He couldn't do it on a wet night in Stoke. I think it's lovely. <laughs> I think it's lovely to have a player who grew up around the corner from me, absolutely smashing it for United. <sighs> you know, you never from get Old Trinity, You're not from Wivenshaw. <laughs> Stop pretending you're from Wivenshaw, right? You're not. You're from Old right? You're from Cheshire. Neither's Marcus, he's from fucking Wivington. He's right, all it is is because hey, Wivington. He's from Wivington. Right, he's born in Wivington Hospital, right? Like Mike, all my kids were born there. That's all it is, right? right. That is I was it. born in St Bollocks. Mary's on Oxford Road. That Doesn't video. Fucking Oxford Road. That, exactly. That video of Marcus Rashford doing the keepy uppers that he put up when he was 10, even though he was a bit, definitely a bit <laughs> older. <laughs> that was in Wivenshaw. He drove Defo. to Wivenshaw, right, to, to, <laughs> to, to film a video where like many lane. people That's do. That's Button Lane, I'll tell you exactly where that is. It's Button fucking Lane. Take me, take me and where, prove it. Where in Wivington? It's Wivington, yeah. Is it? That's a take, take me up Button Lane. <laughs> that's like hey, that's save that for off camera. Hear that? Uh, right, Alison, <laughs> what was I going to ask you? Um, is Wolves' manager better than United manager? Dead quick. Oh, man, fuck that depressing conversation. Ask him about Marcus <laughs> Rashford. Rashford. How fucking good's Marcus Rashford? When's he going to win the Ballon d'Or? Are they better than Rooney and Ronaldo, Marcel and Rashford? Come on. Uh, tell look, us I think people are like, how dare you even compare the two when you say, like, look at Ronaldo and Rashford? Does No one's here sitting there thinking... I mean, for me, Ronaldo might be the greatest player that's ever fucking laced up a pair of boots, right? The fact that you can hold up Marcus's stats next to him 
in the same amount of time at the same club in a team that's fucking way worse. It's a talking point. No one's sitting there going, look at that. Marcus is better than Ronaldo. That means, like, yes, people man. extrapolate that. You go, look, he's done better than him so far. That means he's going to score 3,000 goals and win all the Ballon d'Ors. No one's ever saying that. They're going, fuck I me. Am. He's yeah. actually got, I at this am. stage of his career, 200 games in, he's got more goals than Terry Henry and more goals than um, Cristiano Ronaldo. That is fucking mint. And he's had managers that have bought players in his position. He's had managers that didn't fancy him. He's had to break through when he's had the likes of Zlatan and Lukaku and Sanchez and even Tony Marshall all in his way. And the, all Marshall you ever hear about is that. They're friends, mate. They're doing Either this way, together, he was still in his like way. Mike Lowry. Still in his fucking way at one point when one of them would start, one of them would come off the bench. So the fact Marshall that he's still here. Hilariously, at the start of the season, I saw loads of people saying he's got a bad attitude. I don't want the fucking oh, that was mad. That was because he bought a chain with diamonds on. Man, I want Just one of them chains. I'm he's getting black. one of them That's chains, mate. People fucking hey, I'm it. getting a Rashi chain, mate. I don't give a fuck. He's the best player in the planet. I'm Rashford. getting a Rashi chain. End of. If Rashford, if Rashford fucking hits 30 now, <laughs> yeah. you've got to, haven't you? We've all got to go out and we'll get a get fucking one. chains. And how well, many the thing got... is, he could. We haven't had a player at 30 since Robin Van Persie when we won a league. So that tells you like what level that like, he's at at the moment. He's absolutely smashing it. I'm, I'm, he's, he's been brilliant this season, despite having a bit of a dip at some point during the season, weirdly, when he was played down the middle. But he's having one of those seasons. Now, I think he's still got bits in his game to improve on. I think there's got bits that I would like to see him take to the next level. But what we saw against Norwich, that was a player playing with confidence. That was a player that n- believes in himself and his own ability. And was doing the sort of things that we want to see a United player doing. He was entertaining. He was fucking bodying defenders left and right. You know, he's doing fucking Marseille turns and he's doing them fucking elasticos and stuff like that. And you're just like, come on, mate. That's fucking quality. And the right time in the right place. Exactly. You're not seeing him doing that when we was fucking 3-0 down at half time to City. You're seeing him doing it when he's got the ability to do it. We're already like one up or something. And he's just thinking, I'm going to fucking absolutely ruin this guy. And he could have got an assist on the back of that Elastico as well. He probably should have got an assist on the back of it. He's playing fantastic. So amidst all the other shit that's going on at the club at the moment, yeah, just fucking appreciate what we're seeing because it's top. Tony Marshall, 11 goals in 19 as well, number nine. He's growing into that position, getting a lot better. When you're looking at the runs he's making, he's doing the dirty work um, against Norwich as well, flying into challenges. Mason fucking Greenwood, nine goals in 12 starts. Like, We've got something there to work with, you know. Now, I'm not saying they're going to win the Premier League in the European Cup, but it might happen. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be but surprised, if, likely. surprised if it doesn't. Uh, if Marcus Rashford does hit 30, by the way, I'm promising I will get a Rashi necklace and I will right. wear it for the rest of the season. <laughs> necklace? Necklace? <laughs> now. To go with your earrings. A chain? It's a necklace. It goes around your fucking neck. What do you call it? A, a chain? chain? Yeah. But it's a necklace Make sure it still. matches your fucking handbag, It's guys. still a fucking necklace. Right. right bracelet. Right. Well, we'll get, I'll tell you what, if he gets it, I'll get you a necklace. Right, I'll get, get, you a get, me a thinner, neck- get me a thinner, more feminine yeah. one, and yeah, then we I can call it a necklace. Well, we'll, we'll, have, we'll have fucking diamonds on it anyway. Right then, on to predicted 11s. Who is Ollie going to start in the FA Cup against Wolves? I kind of think he's going to go full strength. Let's see what the guys think. Halson, who's going to play, mate? I think it's got to be full strength, yeah. I think... Um... As we've all sort of alluded to, the FA Cup probably is our best chance at silverware. And like Adam was saying, I think the we have to keep fighting for top four regardless because that's the ultimate marker of where you are as a football team is where you finish in the league. But um, silverware is about what football teams are about. You've got to be in it to win trophies or at least be trying to win trophies. So um, I'd be disappointed if he didn't put his full strength team out, to be honest. I'd be more inclined for him to do that against City in a game where, if we're being honest with ourselves, we're probably not going to go to the Etihad and and probably beat them three clear goals, are we? So um, I reckon, yeah, I'd go with uh, Big Dave in net. Um, Fantastic save from him against Norwich. Let's hope he's uh, he's over his little wobbles again and uh, he's going to be the keeper we all hope he can be. Um, Wan-Bissaka on the right. Obviously on the left, Williams. Um, Maguire and Lindelof. I would go... I think he's going to be 4-2-3-1. I would like to see him do the 4-3-3 more often, but let's be real, probably isn't going to. Um, I would go with Matic and Fred. Um, I think it'll be Andreas Pereira, but I really loved what Matt brought to the team against Norwich. I just don't think... 
Uh, playing against Premier League opposition twice in one week is what Matt has got in his locker. So Dan James on the right and um, Marcus on the left and Tony Marshall up front um, with Pereira behind, if I didn't mention Pereira. Adam, what's your 11, mate? What's, 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 what's the situation with uh, Sergio Romero? Wasn't on the bench the other day. Is he injured? There's nothing he's injured. No, I don't, I don't think he's injured. I, no. There's nothing going on with Sergio Romero. No, no, I, f- I think it was just uh, to give him a rest, rest. I'm not did sure. Did I hear he had knee issues as well? Or did I make that up? No, no, no. Just put the hair in mate, net, mate. No, no, no. I mean, I've not heard I'm anything to suggest that Romero's got knee issues, if I'm being honest, but... I'm going to go. Roy Carroll in goal. <laughs> Sim, I would mate. What's the matter with you? <laughs> oh, but, you know, uh, I did lose my mind for a second then. I forgot what fucking day it was. Go on, who's in goal? Two up right back. Um, nah, uh, David De Gea in goal. Uh, Diogo Delo is going to get a game. Ooh. Ahead of Aaron Rambasaka. Um, Maguire. Lindelof. Luke Shaw is going to play. I don't know why. But have, he's play Luke Shaw. have we seen Delo at left back for United yet? Right yeah. back, I said. Right back. Yeah, I know, but is have, it we, Anfield? have we seen him play? Oh, yeah, left back at Anfield. But, uh, actually, no, no, no. He's going to play Brandon Williams because Brandon did well with Adama Traore last time. So he's going to think, OK, I'll do it again. So Brandon, um, midfield, got no choice really, but Matic and Fred. Um I think it looks like Rashford and Marshall are going to start because they came off, went straight down the tunnel. So Rashford, Marshall, Andreas, who's c- coming into a little bit of form, and Danny James. Well, Mata, though, probably should start, but has he got the legs to? Um, I mean, he's finding some great passes the other day, two assists. Andreas could have had an assist or two as well. Brandon Williams, how did he miss that chance? Aww. He's dreamed of that chance so many. I dreamed of that chance so many times. Bobbled, it bobbled. Yeah, there was Smashed a slight tremor. How, how can you score that, that half volley against Sheffield United? But buy that one. <laughs> it's football's nuts in it, but yeah. Uh, we'll let what it, a yeah. player, by the way. Can we just appreciate the fact that he was in the fucking six yard box? Yeah, what a player, yeah. Yeah. I was waiting for Steve. Yeah, to a lot, to be fair. Steve's not going to have anyone slightly critical of his boy. No, to be fair, I fucking hammered him this weekend. I was like, should we talk about that fucking miss or what? <laughs> I don't really want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> Love the way he says when he hammered him, he means he, like, he actually hammered him to his, to his face. Yeah, exactly. Not, exactly. not just like aimlessly on Twitter to nobody. Uh, right, starting 11, Jay. Um, I, I don't know. You got any mates in the 11 this week or what? Um, no, no, not no, like no, that. No, not like these, these boys. Um, uh, I'm going to go with Romero. I've not heard anything about him being injured. I know he wasn't on the bench, but I think if he is fit, I think Oli likes to play him in the cup games. Um, and with you on the Williams versus Traore, so Williams at left back, Lindelof, Maguire. Um, I'll probably go with Aaron Wambasaka. I think Oli might be trying to get a settled back four if he can, even in the cup game. So I think he might, because he knows it's must win, go with the, the strongest back four, because I think that is probably the strongest back four, arguably. Um, I'll go with Fred and Pereira as the two sort of holding midfielders, purely because I think, yeah, Matic has been mint lately, but. Mm. I do think he needs to rest him and handle him carefully. Um, and we do need him against the Scousers. So I'll go with uh, Fred and Pereira. Mm. I'll probably throw Gomez in, in number 10. Because we haven't got a lot of great options there, have we? Um, Jesse's gone completely off the boil. So if you're going to put someone in it, and it is a cut game, he might give uh, Angel a chance. And I'll go with Dan James, Anthony Marshall and Marcus Rashford as your front three. Decent, decent. Have we got everyone's hey. team there? Did we get everyone? Steve, yeah, anything on Angel then? Is he staying now? Um, I don't think he's signed his deal, um, but word on the street is that he might be featuring a bit more, possibly even starting. So that might be bang on what I was saying there about might might start this week. Um, I can't imagine he starts at Anfield. I can't imagine he starts at Burnley. I mean, there are just two games that you don't look and go, Angel Gomez. Yeah, you don't. So, um, (laughs) at home against Wolves, you might have a point. That might be the the time to give him a start. I don't think he's going to um, Portugal as part of this Bruno Fernandes deal, should it happen anyway. 
Uh, right, we need to talk opposition. We've spoken about Wolves a lot already, the manager, the way they play, but let's talk about specific players that we need to uh, shut up if we want to get the win in this one. Adam, who do we need to deal with? We all know about Traore. Who else is there? I like Hard to see, that. like, who they're going to start, who they're going to rest. Um, obviously, Raul Jimenez, fantastic. Number nine, great movement off the ball. In between the lines, his runs are pretty good. Hit the bar on a post against us in the last game. Um... Is obviously a handful up top, but the midfield men are the, the magic ones, Neves, Matilio, they make them tick. Um, and, and if they both play, it'll be a very difficult game for us to win that battle in midfield. Halson, who do we need to watch out for in Wolves' team? I disagree that Jimenez is fantastic, but he's bagging. He he's bagging this season for him. Um, and he's, he's assisting as well. He's, his link-up play is better than he's finishing for me. I don't uh, think it's fantastic, but he's scoring a lot and assisting a lot. You did say fantastic. No, but th that's what you just said. I don't think it's fantastic, but he's scoring a lot and he's assisting. No, he's, a lot. Uh, so he's bagging. He is bagging and he's also <laughs> assisting. I think his link up play is better than being a <laughs> pure out and out goal scoring number nine. I think that's what he offers. Um, and if the rumours were correct, and I'm not sure they were, if that was the reason that United was looking at him, I get it at least. Um, so, yeah, I mean, Troy is a real interesting one. He's on fire at the minute. Uh, Traore playing with confidence um, but I, I think Brandon's up for that sort of physical challenge so uh, I think that's going to be an interesting little tussle they will target Brandon because there's just fucking nothing happening down that right hand side where wan is it's just an absolute fucking waste of time so I reckon the gap that you try and exploit if you're Wolves is you try and get someone uh, in between Maguire and, and Williams you try and fucking switch play quickly you try and get in behind while he's actually doing bits in the opposition box. That's where the gaps are for Wolves. And as Adam said, the midfield really makes them tick. They've got the ability to, to hit those 30, 40 yard passes for someone like Traore to get in space and get in behind United. So it'd be really interesting to see how United actually create chances in this game. Um, because I think if we're sensible, we don't go totally guns blazing with the fullbacks. You have to be aware of the count with these. They are capable of scoring on us. So I think you have to be really wary. But I think if we get our noses in front, I think we'd be okay. Um, we could rattle a couple of goals in. It's just whether or not we're able to keep it a clean sheet at the other end. Really going to miss Scott McTominay in this one, I think. Um, what's your score prediction, Jay? Um, I'm, I'm glad you didn't ask me about the opposition. I'm not even going to... Oh, go sorry. Away. No, it's fine, it's fine. It's all been covered by the okay, lads there. Yeah, I'm well only going to repeat Fair what enough. them two have said because it's not like I'm a, a mad expert on Wolves. Um, I'm going to go for... How's it work if, if it's a draw? Is it extra time? Extra time. Uh, rock, paper, scissors, yeah. and then a game of chess. And that chess? Yes. I'll win chess. minute at chess. Right, I'll go for us winning by chess. <laughs> I was going to go for the same thing. <laughs> I was going to say United to win on penalties. Yeah. Um, Adam, what are you saying? Um, Mason Greenwood late winner. Oh, and see now that's oh, another thing. Absolute come scenes. On, come hey, on, the, the thirty-two thousand in Old Trafford will be buzzing about that because <laughs> this is going to be one of the lowest turnouts of the season. No, it's not. It is. Come what on. really in the A FA Cup? Fucking third round replay in midweek. Going to be worse yes. than Rochdale in the league. I think call. there's going to be one man and his dog there. We've had a, we've had about four home games on the spin as well. Seriously, mate. Yeah. Yeah, and the money came out like. Not the the right moment for everyone to get fucking rinsed for a season ticket. Sam Keller was like, ha <laughs> cheers. <laughs> Mate, the money came out and the fucking the first game was still playing. Of course it did. <laughs> of course it did. <laughs> Housen, scores. Uh, I think we're going to concede because, you know, we're pretty good at that. Uh, <laughs> two on United. But I fancy Mason to get on the score sheet again in this one, like I was just saying then. I, I do fancy that. He's a fucking absolute goal machine, isn't he? Off the bench, I'd say. If we did it. I know I didn't even start him, and I said he's going to score the winner. Nor did yeah, you. Off the, yeah, I didn't. But I think he's off the bench. Absolute fucking. Give him the fucking number twenty shirt. <laughs> it's, yeah, honestly, it's just about time. No, no. Just, just give number it him. twenty-one. Ah. Next year, ah. Like, he looked like he would cry if someone said, "I'm going to take your shirt off you, Daniel James." <laughs> right. Yeah. I, I, I'm going to say nil-nil. United on pens. Predictions in. Guys, get your predictions in the comments below. Let us know what you think about what everyone said on today's preview, whether you agree, whether you disagree, whether you think they're chatting bollocks. Uh, go and follow these guys wherever they are. Adam's on Twitter. Halson's pretty much every fucking where. Uh, Jay's on Twitter as well. And we'll see you next time. I'm on Twitter as well if you fancy it. But we'll see you next time, guys. In a bit. Laters.